Uh, I'm talking about uh, a potential treatment for severe SARS-CoV-2 infections. Um, IgG binding integrins as potential targets to block SARS-CoV-2 infections and to attenuate disease severity. Why is this? Because in the beginning of the pandemia, everybody was focusing on ACE2. This is a receptor to infect uh, the cells. And, uh, but when I, look, when I looked at the spike protein, what is responsible for the, for the infection, what, what directly jumped into my eye was this domain here. It's an IgD domain that doesn't exist in other coronaviruses. Especially uh, in the now seven human uh, coronavirus, the five that caused the regular uh, flu, or uh, uh, it's not the flu, it's a mild infection, respiratory infection. And also SARS, that is more similar in the spike, doesn't have it. It has a KGD domain. And as well MERS, uh, that came a little bit later in 2012, uh, as well didn't have this uh, IgD motif. So I think this is like very interesting because in the field of cancer, this IgD motif can bind integrins, IgD integrins, as uh, Lisette presented uh, with her uh, alpha V beta 3. As well, these are very important. So I'm not in, uh, in virus research at this time, so this is just new for me. So I was uh, searching the literature. If this motive is also important for some of the viruses to use as infection. And what I found was that uh, the West Nile virus uses alpha V beta 1, alpha V beta 3 to infect uh, cells. The uh, Ebola virus uses alpha, uh, alpha 5 beta 1. And the um, Herpes simplex virus uses 5 from the 8 known IgD uh, integrins. So yes, they can use the RGD integrin to infect cells, so why not dust of dust? But no one at this time was looking at it, everybody was focusing on, um, on, on the ACE2 receptor. So I was applying also for the COVID grant, unfortunately didn't get it, it was not uh, important enough, everybody focused on ACE2, but I found a company that has an uh, IgG uh, uh, inhibitor, a pan inhibitor that blocks five of the of the eight mm -hmm. IgG integrins. Um, unfortunately, so I'm 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 from Germany. We have a lot of bureaucracy. I was like, yes, finally, I'm away from this bureaucracy. And five years ago, I came to Chile. And I'm dead. <laughs> you have the same bureaucracy as in Germany, so. And so this company, Time is Money, was a company from the US that's like, oh no, this process is way too long for us. So they jumped off. I said, okay, I will write a review and see if someone else is interested. And then at this time also, I searched more in the literature and I used Twitter a lot. And there was a group from Brown University that just published a MET inhibitor and we talked. And uh, he got interested in this hypothesis that I had. So we started the collaboration, and this is the data that I will show you today uh, from this uh, collaboration that used the IgD uh, uh, motif of the spike protein to infect cells. And if we block the integrins, if we can reduce uh, <coughs> the infection. So this is a hypothesis that we, that we uh, so one thing, the IgD integrins can bind the, the spike protein uh, and the virus can infect the cells. And the other one is, IgD integrins are very important for activating TGF beta. Uh, but this is the second part of my talk, so I will talk uh, about this part a little bit later. The first part is uh, about uh, the the uh, integrins and blocking the, uh, the infection. And this is a drug. There are now many in development. Unfortunately, <coughs> none of them is FDA approved. They are all clinical trials, is one and two, uh, but none of them has made it because they are mostly used in the, uh, the field of cancer. And this was a promising drug like 
10 years ago, but uh, like the phase one trial was successful, showing no cytotoxicity in the patient, etc. So I was looking for drugs that can be can be important in this that you don't need to start from zero, that already showed some safety profile, some function functionality, etc. And also for a PAN inhibitor, these are the eight integrins, RGD binding integrins. There are 24 integrins. From these 24, eight can uh, uh, bind to the RGD motor. And this inhibitor, GLPG0187, can block six of the eight, except the alpha uh, two B beta three and alpha eight beta one. It can block the six, six integrins. So that is very important because we don't know which integrin at this time the virus potentially can use to infect the cells besides ACE2. And so when we started, there were already a couple of uh, uh, variants of the virus in the world. Um, the R785A uh, mutant that says if you leave it mutated, the uh, NEK that has a mutation of the, uh, in the 501 domain and the 484 and 417, no mutations in the beta and gamma variants. Uh, this variant is common uh, in beta and gamma, etc. And then we have the beta uh, variant, the delta variant, and finally also the, the Omicron line, the Omicron one. The study we submitted in December. January, uh, January 22, we submitted that it was like Omicron. So the, the next Omicron uh, subvariants didn't exist at this time, and we want to we need to publish another, so we can't wait for all the variants to come. So these are all the variants that we, that we analyzed in this study. And what we showed from the original, from the original uh, uh, variant, so we created a pseudovirus because working with a direct virus is a little bit risky. So we created a pseudovirus. It's a lentiviral backbone that we introduced the, uh, the different spike proteins of the different variants. And as control, we use uh, pantropic VSVG uh, uh, um, to see if the inhibitor has an effect like specific for the RGD motive or it's uh, unspecific. And when we look at the, at the control, no inhibitor in the infection, uh, no virus, no inhibitor, different concentration of the inhibitor, nothing changed. Yeah? But when we look at the, at the original spike, uh, no inhibitor, no virus, we don't see any, any positive signal. Ah, the, the spike protein also has the, the green fluorescence protein, and with this one we visualize it in flow cytometer, you see. So like if the cell is a glowing green, that means the cell virus was successfully infecting this cell. Yeah. So no inhibitor, we see a 52 per percentage uh, infection, and then with uh, increasing the dosage of the in inhibitor, we can see a reduction of the of the infection, so like lower, lower uh, flow sense in the, in the flow cycle. So that shows that uh, our, our hypothesis is correct. Yes, no inhibition is a, is a control, and a concentration dependent inhibition with the inhibitor. So then we wanted to also look for for the other uh, uh, spike proteins, the different variants, and we see the same. This one, we use the one micromolar uh, of the inhibitor, and we see in all cases of the different variants of the spike protein, we see a reduction. Some are more, more potent to, to infect the cells, others are less, uh, uh, less uh, uh, effective in, the suppressing, uh, in infecting uh, the cells, but even with this one, we see a suppression uh, with the inhibitor. <coughs> So then we also looked at the original virus, then the beta variant, and the delta variant is a different uh, mutation that they have and combined. And also here we see, also here we see an, uh, a reduction in the, in the, in the infection. 
47, 56% in the delta variant. We use one micromolar. In all cases, we see a reduction of the, of the infection. So we were ready to submit, but like we were very certain we had the beta variant. The delta variant became the prominent. We got lucky to get uh, uh, the, 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 the mRNA of the, of the delta variant. Okay, we will include this result because maybe it's important to check. Um, we were ready to submit and then an Omicron. It's like, yeah, let's do this as well because we have access to it. Let's try this one. This was like November 21, so we put the, the, the mRNA sequence or the cDNA sequence of the, of the Omicron spike into our vector, and is it the same, and also with the Omicron variant, here again the Delta variant and the original one, and with the Omicron, we did say a high infection. So we need to change uh, the, the concentration of the pseudovirus in, the, in all the other experiments, we use uh, 10 times 10 to the 6 uh, units of the virus to infect. With Omicron, we needed to increase the doses, but then we also saw an uh, efficient uh, effectivity of the cells. And then we use then the inhibitor of one micromolar, we also get a reduction of it. So, with this one, we showed. Uh, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, the RGD inhibitor, the RGD integrin inhibitor, the GLPG, can uh, uh, reduce, prevent an infection uh, of the virus, or in this case, a pseudovirus uh, with a spike you, that can potentially use the RGD uh, motive. So it's not just ACE2 that the virus can use to, to infect uh, the cells. The other thing, and this is like how I became aware of, of uh, the group of Brown, they published uh, uh, a MEK inhibitor that, that showed uh, efficient reduction in the, in the infection. And I was thinking like maybe there's some connection with this one, so I contacted them and we talked about it. And then I said, okay, let's try a collaboration and look for, for a combinational uh, therapy maybe. It's not just the RGD, as well as the MAC inhibitor, we can get a synergy of this one. And this is also what we can see here. This is a MAC inhibitor, this is a, the RGD of endocrine inhibitor, and here's a combination. This is just a vehicle. Uh, this is experiment we just did with, uh, with this variant, the uh, D614G uh, mutant, and um, no inhibitor, 40% uh, infectivity. With the integrin, uh, with, uh, with the MEK inhibitor, we see a reduction nearly 50%. With the GLPG, we see a reduction, and then we combine it, there is some synergy of this, of this inhibitor. And then you look at the VSV, uh, there's uh, no reduction with the GLPG, there's a slight reduction with the MEK inhibitor. So, we don't know what are the integrins. In the meantime, now we know that spike can bind RGD integrins for different groups. One group showed uh, that spike can bind alpha V beta one, but only after this one gets activated. So the integrins they are in three conformations. There is like a close inactive, close active, and uh, uh, open active. And this, this uh, alpha B beta 5 need to be activated. It doesn't say like, if it's uh, the closed active or the open active, but it needs to be activated that the spike can, can, uh, can, bind, can bind this, uh, uh, this integral. Yeah, because when it's not uh, activated, they activated it mangan. When it's not activated, you don't see anything. Yeah. Um, this is a mutant of the RGD motive. They muted the, 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 um, the which one? Ah, the, 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 uh, the first amino acid of the RGD motive, they muted from R, R403A. But in, in this one also, uh, the spike can't bind anymore to this integrin. And then you use another uh, integrin inhibitor, the silenitide, I don't know to pronounce in English correctly. 
but uh, when you use this inhibitor that inhibits three integrins, it's uh, alpha V beta three, alpha V beta five, and alpha five beta one. And when you use this integrin inhibitor, you also soon see uh, a binding of the spike protein with alpha five beta one. So it's like the first integrin already proven also with a pull down, as they showed that this, uh, that this uh, 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 spike protein can bind this particular integral. Mm -hmm. Then there's also another, uh, other researches that uh, came up. This one is 21, spike can bind alpha V beta 3. I also showed with this one, also use the same inhibitor. Because remember, this inhibitor can bind three of the eight. And you use the concentration dependent, shows a reduction of the, of the binding capacity. Uh, and another group also showed alpha V beta 3 as well alpha V beta 6 that can be bound by spike by the, by, by the spike protein. They couldn't, they didn't see any binding with alpha V beta, uh, alpha 5 beta 1. But this can be because they didn't activate it. Yeah, but this was very important in the first publication that I showed in, uh, the alpha V 5 beta 1 need to be activated. So with this one you already show three integrins can bind spike protein because most uh, very likely that in the humans, the virus not only use ACE2, but it can only also use the RGD integrins to, to infect uh, human, uh, 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 everybody of us. And, and why is this important? Because there's one controversy that is also for me was a little bit weird to see because not all the cells in the lung and the upper respiratory part express ACE2. So, but everybody say ACE2. And this is like maybe the reason why like also the virus is like was going more deep down into the lungs to infect the lower part of the lungs and not just the upper part. Why is this important? So now from Omicron, uh, not Omicron 1, after Omicron 1, uh, after Omicron 1, the, the um, the spike of the protein got a mutation. So it doesn't have the RGD motif anymore. It has this RGN motif. And with this one, it's possible that uh, uh, the, uh, the virus only can infect through ACE2 or maybe other receptors, but not anymore through the AGD. And from this moment on, the infections, they are not anymore deep down in the lung. They are mostly only in the upper part of the lung. And what it seems also the severity of the infection of the um, of the, uh, of, the of, of the virus is less than with the original uh, with the original uh, strains. Yeah. So this can be a reason that the IgD motif was very important for the severity of the infection that we now see like a lower severity and a lower infectivity to the to the lower lines. Uh, there, there are other papers that also now show integrins like this one, alpha V beta 3. Uh, this shows to bind to the beta 1 integrins. Again, another one of alpha 5 beta 1. And a new one, alpha 2B beta 3. This is like kind of new that I haven't seen before, but they also show uh, that it, this spike protein can activate platelets through integrin alpha 2b beta 3. And why is this important? Platelets, platelets are in the proteins where TGF beta, 80% of TGF beta is stored in, in the human in, in the integrins. That's like the main resource of TGF beta. So this might be also an important part for severity that I will talk in a little bit in a little bit. So another alpha of alpha beta 1. So, and now the second part uh, of the talk, integrins activate TGF beta. So, TGF beta, there exist three isoforms, TGF beta 1, 2, and 3, and they are all in a latent form. It's very important uh, that they're not like directly active. TGF beta is doing a lot of things, a lot. Yeah? So it's very important that it's strongly regulated and uh, latent TGF beta. So you have TGF beta, it uh, binds non-covalently to the latency associated protein, the LAP, 
And this lab can bind completely. Uh, this, this complex is uh, called the small latent complex. And this small latent complex through the lab can bind to, to, to a natural protein. And this is uh, like the large latent complex. Yeah? Um, so this was a hypothesis that I want to read you about that, that got me interested, like the first part, blocking RGD integrins to prevent the infection, and also blocking the RGD integrin to prevent TGF beta activation. And why is this important? These are all symptoms that we see in, in uh, severe uh, patients. Yeah? Uh, acute lung injur uh, injuries, ARDS, fibrosis, activation of TH17 cells, extracellular matrix remodeling, acute kidney injury, lung injury, blood clotting, angiogenesis, alveolar, alveolar epithelial permeability, worsen pneumonia, complement activation. And on the first view, they are completely different. What I was thinking, what they have in common. So when I looked at each of them, what they have in common, DJ better plays an important role in all of the symptoms. So maybe, maybe DJ better is the reason why <coughs> why we see these severe diseases that we don't see with, with other uh, uh, viral infections. Um, and then the other thing, so there's a cohort of patients that have an increased risk of, um, of developing a severe disease. This is uh, people with, uh, with asthma, cough, EPVF, etc., hypertension, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, obesity, liver disease, neurologic disease, immune compromised people, and uh, people that are older than 65, especially men. And what they have in common? The baseline of TGF beta, latent TGF beta, but the baseline of TGF beta is higher than in younger people, people with uh, no uh, medical conditions. And it might be easier, so, so when the virus binds to the integrins, the integrins change as well like the, the, the activation status, and then can activate the TGF beta. And because these patients, they have already increased baseline of TGF beta, so this might be a reason why these patients then develop this severe uh, uh, diseases of the, of the symptoms that we have seen, because they have already more TGF beta in the system. Latent, but the virus is able then to activate it. So what we tried then to look for, for the, we collected uh, plasma samples from patients, and uh, try to look if this hypothesis is like correct, if there's a, 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 a correlation of TGF beta with this is key. What we see, there's increased TGF beta level, level in people um, uh, of different ages. What we also saw that TGF beta level is related with the race. So white people and also Hispanics or Latinos they have increased DJ better level in the serum compared to black people, Asian people, or other ethnicities. In, and then the other yeah. thing what we see, depending on the number of medications in the ER that the patients receive, we see a reduction of TJ better. And this might be also influence the outcome of these patients. We couldn't see any any correlation of symptoms, as well we didn't see any correlation with female and males, um, and we didn't see any influence of the, the symptoms, so the security or, uh, that was developed by the Brown to see, uh, to, to differentiate the severity of the different patients, like without symptoms, discharge, admitted uh, without uh, oxygen, admitted with extra oxygen, and admitted to ICUs uh, and stepped up. But we didn't see any correlation of uh, teacher beta in this group as well. The yeah. other thing, plasma levels are related in patients with a history of kidney disease. So we look for the different uh, people who potentially have uh, a higher possibility to develop sickness. 
uh, COVID, but we only found a correlation with people who had the chronic uh, kidney disease, who have a higher teacher pattern. So, uh, the, the University of Brown, they went back to their cancer immunotherapy research, also their grant uh, ran out, so we couldn't continue any more studies. Um, but there are others who, who also now, after two years of the pandemic, they also start to show a correlation of TGF beta and, and uh, uh, severe COVID uh, infections. For instance, in cancer models, um, decreased levels of ACE2 correlated with increased levels of TGF beta. One thing that we also observed is like with COVID, uh, they reduce the ACE2. So infect the cells and ACE2 also get reduced. So why is a reduced uh, level correlated with, increased, uh, correlated with increased levels of TGF beta? So you have a balance between ACE and ACE2. And this balance is important for pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory pathways. If you have the balance is more for ACE, uh, for ACE then you have more pro-inflammatory uh, um, phenotype. But if you have more ACE2, then it's more anti-inflammatory. Yeah? I, I, this is like going through the RAS system, the renin angiotensin uh, aldosterone system. Yeah? This is like where the balance is going. So if you have too much of ACE, you have more of the RAS system activation. And this uh, creates so the bradykinin uh, way to create the pro-inflammatory cytokines and through aldosterone it goes to uh, activate the TGF beta. Yeah. Um, the other thing, so that's like the SARS CoV 2, down regulate ACE2. And this also increases uh, so increase fibrosis formation as well as regulation of TGF beta. COVID-19 potentiates TGF beta and acute symptomatic and future long COVID-19 girls compared to healthy girls. And in this study, they showed 19 out of 23 patients the severe persistent COVID and 8 out of 29 moderate patients presented signs of lung fibrosis associated to lower levels of interferon beta, beta but higher interleukin 1 alpha and TGF beta. So even so, we couldn't do the studies, but others showed the correlation of TGF beta and severe uh, COVID-19. These are some, some other papers that show the, the correlation of TGF beta that are published now. Uh, it triggers barrier dysfunction and vascular leak via integrins and TGF beta signaling. The severe COVID induces TGF beta dominated chronic immune responses that does not target itself. Immunohistochemical analysis of TGF beta say in pulmonary fibrosis, role of TGF beta in connective tissue, and last possible role of matrix uh, metalloproteinases and TGF beta in COVID severity and as well as sick radio. So it is a potential. I need to talk to Stefania. And the media better might be also pop up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, long COVID patients. Conclusion, that's called dos variants can infect cells via RGD binding integrins. The RGD integrin in the inhibitor G0187 blocks that's called uh, to pseudovirus infection, severe COVID-19 can be infected in TGF beta. And this is like blocking RGD integrins could potentially reduce or prevent complications associated with severe COVID-19 infection. And blocking RGD integrins that could beneficially be beneficial for COVID-19 patients with pre-existing conditions <coughs> because of the increased TGF beta at basal levels. But there's also some open questions that are still need to be addressed. It's not clear whether TGF beta is a driver of severity of COVID-19 patients or whether it's just a consequence of it. That's very, also very important. So you block TGF beta, but then it doesn't change anything because it's not the driver, it's just a consequence. The other thing, the RGD motive disappears after Omicron 1. It's a, and the, 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 the D405 N mutation. There's one study that suggests that SARS-CoV-2 can bind the RGD integrins independent of RGD domain, but I haven't found any more than this hypothesis. And the other question is the role of the RGD integrins TGF beta in long COVID patients. The one thing that Estefania showed is the, the difference of the platelets. And remember platelets, 
as the main storage of TGF data. So there might be a correlation. Um, and then now, one thing that I found very interesting, so now I don't know if you heard it, about artifi artifi uh, artificial intelligence and then jet GPT. So you just write some words, short phrases, and then just GPT can create your little summary, an essay about the topic. So I asked Jack GPT what it thinks about my idea. So I just wrote blocking RGD integrins to inhibit COVID-19 infections and to prevent TGF beta activation and automated process. I didn't change anything. Uh, it sounds already very nice. <laughs> it's not perfect though. We still need to wait some years. To, to perfectionize it, but I think for an automated process, artificial intelligence, it's already pretty good. But for the students who think now to use it, uh, today in the New York Times, there was an article, uh, the student get caught. So uh, if you want to use them, this sounds like, when I read, when I read the students' thesis, whatever, essay, this is too, too round, too, too good written. Like students, you need some time to write professionally. So you, you will not sound like that. <laughs> I, I have seen it, so be careful. Yeah? And uh, the New York Times, what it says here, uh, college student caught submitting paper using JetGPT, the JetGPT. The paper was way too current and well structured. So, yeah, so be careful. Uh, and the other thing is like, this is for this. And I have one more part here. Then I ask the same question, blocking TGF beta for long COVID patients. But these two paragraphs are the same. So if you think to use it, or you have two students in the same class, they use it and they write very similar, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you need to write it again or repeat the course. Yeah, with this one, I want to thank the collaborator with Ingrid. Uh, we did uh, the review, and then with Wafe from Brown University in Oberlin, with, uh, with the students, we did uh, all these inhibition essays and analyzed, uh, analyzed uh, the teacher paper and the patients. Thank you. After, after Omicron, I checked. Uh, so far, I also checked the latest one. The, what was the name? Why? D Y? I don't know the name. But, but I haven't checked all of them, but nearly all of them, and they all have now the the R motif mutated to the to the to the end. Uh, the RGD is now an NGD. And this is from the Okay? What? Yes. I, I think this is a definite uh, a possibility. Well, there's this a possibility like this ACE2, reduce ACE2, promote inflammation, also promote TGF beta. So, you would still need the intervenes to activate TGF beta, but it will not prevent the uh, infection. But the infection is not going anymore to the lower lungs. It's now more in the upper part, upper lung, respiratory part, but not anymore in the lower lungs. <coughs> uh, Do you think it's Well, if everybody say this H2. Well, I don't think well, these two parties, No, I think it, I mean, there are, there are three scenarios. Like, there are cells that are H2 negative, but still we see 
we see uh, infection of, uh, of, the, of the virus to this one. This can be the RGB because we, not we, but others showed there are at least four of the eight final RGB motors uh, uh, integrins can bind, uh, the, uh, the virus can bind to. So maybe it doesn't need ACE2. The other thing is like it doesn't need RGB integrins, it still can do it without the ACE, and it's still like the main one. Or it's a gen synergy. But this one, we don't know. This could be, but as now it's not worth to look at this anymore because at least for now, there's no RGB no motor anymore on the spine, so we're not fighting. So, but what, what is still interesting to continue is to look for, for the TTF beta activation. Because there are different pathways, like the reduced ACE2 that is still playing a role in the, in the new variant, uh, um, that the reduced ACE2 through the RAS system can activate pro information uh, cytokines, but as well as TGF beta. And TGF beta still is in the latent form, so you need to activate it. And the major activation of TGF beta is through interesting. It can be through acid, to heat, to, to strength, but the major part of activation of TGF beta are the interesting. So this still can play a role to use an inhibitor to block the activation of the latent TGF beta that is now uh, so to you only from the right side. And uh, Taiwan is doing involvement with the activation of the Taiwan Yeah, so much. Okay. And there is a group in, uh, uh, in the States, as a to use the recovery of Taiwan in the Yeah. Uh, to prevent Yeah. No, it's a TGF better, it's also, yes, I, no, I don't have the data there, but, um, the point in the in the, in the uh, H1 N1 the the which virus is it? It's uh, influenza influenza R virus. They show uh, it has higher TGF beta, and and the this one has higher fibrosis. And if you block TGF beta, this patient with this infection has lower lung fibrosis. So there's uh, definitely like uh, connections, yeah. I don't, I don't know, because some uh, papers are published 21, which was before Omicron. There's one or two papers that are published in 22, but there I haven't looked now in the details which spike uh, uh, they were using. If it was the Omicron or the one from the other one. As you know, like the process of doing the experiments, submitting, rejecting, resubmitting is long and uh, you might not have the chance to involve the latest one. Like, we were lucky that it's like, the friend had the Delta variant of, of the group of, of, of Brown that to include it. And then came Omicron, it's like, I can also have this one, it's like, okay, we need to wait another three weeks. Yeah, but it's worth it. It was around Christmas at this time, uh, uh, no one will read your submissive paper anyway, so let's wait to include the data and submit it and after Christmas, because you think Christmas and New Year, no review will read it. So, as I say, we will wait. Uh, and then I think with the similarities, uh, this is, uh, it's, uh, that you don't have the chance, like, okay, now it's a new one, and it's very fast. And it's not as fast as other viruses, but the mutation rate, is still uh, have a good pace. So uh, it's not that same as I have. We have this now and now. We have this result and then, yeah, wait for the next one. They already come out and then it's the next one. 